So I want us to look at bacterial growth um, today. Now, um, what we look at today is um, the growth of bacteria, um, how fast, so basically the generation time, and look at the process, the entirety of the process, assuming that actually the bacteria is growing um, on a, a very controlled environment. The, therefore, we're going to look at the growth curve, then environmental factors which influence um, growth. That includes pH, temperature, oxygen, or lack of oxygen need, and then water and salts. Okay, let's now look at the matter. So first of all, uh, growth, we know what the meaning of growth in this context is. We know bacterial cells can increase in number, mass, depending on um, the um, things that are inside the bacteria. And um, basically, bacteria can, uh, can, can be grown outside the human body, um, like on a, a solid medium, Okay, like here in agar plate or in a, in a liquid me medium. Okay, so this growth of bacteria um, takes time. Okay, and the time required for a single bacterial cell to grow or basically divide is uh, what we call um, generation time. Okay, so we know the division. Uh, basically, uh, bacteria divides by binary fission. Basically, that, that cell division, the time that it takes for that cell division to happen is what we call generation time. So different bacteria have different generation times and that determines by the, for example, how fast an infection happens. For example, if, if you're dealing with a bacteria that has a longer generation time. Now, for example, like Triponema pallidum, which has a very long, okay, comparatively with like E. coli, uh, this will take time for the infection to take hold because the generation time is quite uh, huge compared to something like uh, E. coli, okay, or, uh, uh, or staph aureus. So that is what basically generation time is. It varies from uh, bacteria to bacteria, and it also determines um, basically how fast an inf infection takes a foothold. So based on that, if we put the bacteria, okay, if we put a bacteria in a very controlled environment and don't interfere with anything and let it grow and we actually look at it, then we're going to, we can actually develop what we call a growth curve of the bacteria. And actually it looks something of this sort, okay? So the, the curve is basically divided into four sections, so four phases. And the first phase is called the lag phase. And then it heads into a very exponential phase or what we call a log phase. And then we can have a stationary phase. And then we can either have decline or death phase, okay? so. This is now what each phase entails. So now the lag phase basically is when now you have inoculated the bacteria into now this fresh medium. Basically, it is now just taking time uh, to start adapting to this new environment. Therefore, the growth at this time will not be uh, that fast. So that's why you can see it's um, we're having quite a, it's almost like stationary, but what is happening, we're having growth, but it is trying to acclimatize at this uh, stage. That's why it's called the lag phase. Then we have the log phase, so what we call the exponential phase. So this is uh, this phase basically has a very high um, reproduction rate, basically. So we the bacteria is here dividing at a constant rate, and basically the number of bacteria that are dying compared to the number of bacteria that are being um, produced, the one that are being produced far outweigh the, the, the amount that is being that is dying. That's why we have exponential growth and it's called the exponential phase. So if we look at it in this graph, you can see this exponential rise in the um, amount or the number of bacterial cells. Then after that, we head into a, a very, uh, like a, a state where there's no much increment. And what is happening here is the amount of bacterial cell growth and death is, almost the same, therefore we are at an equilibrium. And so we don't have any net increase. And so this cell division um, stops due to things like uh, nut the nutrients being there being exhausted or we having toxins accumulating. So therefore, if we check after the exponential, we have a stationary phase where we have um, um, that uh, state basically of equilibrium. Then finally, we go to a decline phase. This is the phase when the, basically the, the death rate is higher than the amount of bacterial cells that are being uh, produced or uh, dividing. So um, eventually it leads to basically an unfavorable condition basically, and the number of bacterial cells decrease and decrease number of population. 
and basically we either have the decline in the number and or death. So if you if you think of it in an, in terms of infection, that is a time that will have recovery of the patient because the amount of bacteria has either declined or completely disappeared. Okay, so just to take you again to this, this is this is uh, the curve, but this is on the assumption that we are working with a very closed system, very controlled environment. So we'll have a lag, log, or exponential, stationary, and decline death phase. Okay, now this all these things, as you said earlier, that is based on the factors that uh, on the fact that these things are within a controlled environment. But what if we know the environment has several things. So the environment will throw different things to you, different temperature, uh, the pH might vary, the levels of oxygen might vary and so on and so forth. So basically we have other things that influence um, microbial growth. Okay, so if these things are there at optimal levels, then we have very fast growth, okay? Uh, or very fast development of this curve. Oh, but if we have these things not in, in suboptimal or levels that are not optimal, then we'll, not ha we'll have the, growth being hampered with. So let's start with pH. So we know pH is basically the measure of uh, hydrogen ion concentration. And um, basically we have three main types of microorganisms of, of basically microorganism, but also bacteria that can be classified on which kind of environment they can grow best. So ideally we'll have most, um, most um, uh, bacteria in this case will actually be able to grow in a very neutral pH or in a neutral pH or within the neutral ranges. That's why, uh, like we know, our blood is within almost within the, the neutral ranges. Uh, so that will provide a very good environment for the bacteria or the microorganism to grow. So these kind of microorganisms are called neutrophiles. Okay, but we have those ones that would love extreme conditions like um, acidic uh, microorganisms that will actually live very well in acidic conditions are called acidophiles, while al uh, alkaliphiles are those ones that will actually survive very well in alkaline uh, pH. And now, this is just an indication the highest growth here for acidophiles will be in a very low pH, which means alkaline um, acidic condition. Uh, we have um, alkaliphiles here having a high growth rate at um, a high pH, which means um, an alkaline state. Okay, neutrophiles will be around uh, the neutral uh, pH. Now, temperature is another um, very important uh, element, by the way. And we know very high temperature, most of the time denatures a lot of um, um, things, okay, including microorganisms. So most, most microorganisms will do well under um, optimal or normal temperature. When you say normal, you mean around the normal body temperature. So that is around 37. So these ones are called mesophiles, okay? And, and most human pathogenic uh, microorganisms are mesophiles because our body temperature is within this range. However, we have those bacteria that will be found doing very well in very high temperatures, like in uh, hot springs. Some are even found in uh, volcanoes and all that. So those are called thermophiles. Then those that are found in low temperature uh, environments, like even fridge or refrigerators, those are called psychophiles. 